one is Katrina. Number 10. The Giza Transmitters The greatest piece of advanced technology in the ancient world may very well have been the Great Pyramid of Giza. It's believed that the Egyptian pyramids were originally designed to be gigantic energy transmitters. There are theories that claim the Great Pyramid was a large machine, not a stone tomb. In the past, the structure may have been capable of producing and transmitting energy, perhaps electromagnetic frequencies. It could have acted as a kind of power plant that would harness energy from the Earth's vibrations and then convert that energy into pure electricity. But if this is true, who was using that electricity? The answer is most likely the ancient Egyptians. If the pyramids really were oversized batteries, they would have been used to distribute clean and limitless energy to the people of ancient Egypt. This means that thousands of years ago, the Egyptians would have had lights and power. But the problem is that nobody has ever found any archaeological evidence of this. As far as historians are aware, the Egyptians never had any kind of electricity or power. So the bizarre theory is this. If the ancient Egyptians weren't using the electricity from the pyramids for themselves, it's likely that someone else was benefiting from it. One theory is that the giant pyramid-shaped energy transmitters could have been used for recharging alien ships. It sounds outrageous, but some scholars agree that Egyptians did have contact with extraterrestrials. It's possible the aliens helped the Egyptians build the pyramids so they could power their own vessels, and then they took their advanced technology with them when they left. What do you think about this? Let me know in the comments below. Number 9. The Greek Laptop Daudis was a famous painter in ancient Athens between 500 and 460 BC. Back in those days, people didn't paint on large canvases, but instead left their artwork on solid pottery. Throughout his long career as an artist, Daudis completed an estimated 300 vases. Archaeologists know he was popular among the Greeks because he often signed his name on vases that he didn't even paint sort of like an ancient autograph. This suggests his artwork was also reproduced, similar to how you can find imitations of any famous artist's work today. It's likely that people would have recreated his pottery in order to sell them for a huge profit. But there's something even stranger. One of the vases painted by Daudis appears to show a man busily working on a laptop. It seems to be proof of highly advanced technology used by the ancient Greeks. The vase depicts a man sitting in a chair. He is hunched over what looks like a laptop, and he even has a stylus pen in one hand. Some say this is evidence of either time travel or ancient Greek computers. However, archaeologist Janet Grossman says it's all just conspiracy nonsense. She claims the object isn't a laptop, but a wax writing tablet used in ancient Greece. This is a compelling argument, although some still say it's difficult to explain the possible USB port that can be seen on the side of the so-called wax tablet. Number 8. Viking GPS Medieval Vikings always knew where they were going, and it was all thanks to an extremely primitive GPS. It was more of a fancy compass, but it was still the first kind of positioning system that was ever used by humans. The Vikings may have been ruthless warriors, but they were also some of the best mariners of their time. They were capable of traveling all across the North Atlantic in an almost perfect straight line, from Scandinavia all the way to Canada. They did this with the help of innovative technology that the world had never seen before. The supposedly barbaric Vikings invented a miraculous compass that worked even when the sun had dipped below the horizon. This amazing tool was discovered in Greenland by archaeologists in 1948. The device has since been called the Unartok disk. It was a navigational tool used by the Vikings 1,000 years ago to travel from Norway to Greenland, a journey of 1,600 miles. Researchers believe that although the small wooden disk could have functioned alone, it was likely used with other tools, such as crystals and a flat slab of wood. Back then, it was almost impossible to navigate when the sun was down, since you can't track the sun if it's not in the sky. To solve this issue, the Vikings used crystal sunstones, 
which are natural calcite stones that produce specific patterns when exposed to the UV rays of sunlight. When the crystals are held in the sky, even after sunset, they can still pinpoint the sun's position underneath the horizon. The Vikings used these crystals, along with their wooden compass device, to track the sun through the night, allowing them to complete long journeys across the sea with extreme navigational accuracy. Number 7. The Colosseum The Romans were responsible for a lot of fantastic inventions, as well as advanced pieces of technology. They were able to cut stone with the same precision as modern stonemasons. They carved complex underground wonders and even pioneered nanotechnology. However, one of the most impressive pieces of engineering in ancient Rome was the Colosseum. To this day, the Colosseum is the largest amphitheater ever built, and yet it's almost 2,000 years old. Researchers are still baffled that the structure was ever finished and that the Romans ever embarked upon such a seemingly impossible task in the first place. The idea for the Roman Colosseum began under the rule of Emperor Vespasian in the year 70 AD. It took about two years of planning, but construction began in 72 AD. Unfortunately, there are no records of the chief architect behind the design, and we don't know the specifics of what went on during the construction. All we know is that it was completed in the year 80 AD under Emperor Titus, Vespasian's heir. But why did the Romans build the Colosseum in the first place? Historians believe it was created to appease an angry population. The people of Rome were upset after the rule of Emperor Nero, who was arguably the worst Roman leader in history. To show that he wasn't as heartless and awful as Nero had been, Emperor Vespasian wanted to make something that would exhibit the glory and strength of Rome. They also hoped that the general population would be distracted and entertained with bloodshed in the Colosseum. This would make it easier for those in power to carry on with their dirty political work. The Colosseum required about 3.5 million cubic feet of stone, which was pulled out of the quarry near modern Tivoli. Similar amounts of Roman concrete, bricks, and volcanic rock were also needed for its construction. However, the concrete is what allowed the structure to be so solid. Then, to finish the magnificent amphitheater, 300 tons of iron clamps were used in order to hold everything together. Number 6. Iron from the Sky King Tutankhamun was born sometime around the year 1341 BC. He was the son of Pharaoh Akhenaten, who was one of the most hated pharaohs in Egyptian history. He was removed from power after ruling for 17 years, and nine-year-old Tutankhamun took his place on the throne. Sadly, the young boy passed away from a gangrene infection just 10 years later. His body was buried in the Valley of the Kings, like all the pharaohs that came before him. His tomb was sealed and lost, but was discovered again in 1922 by Howard Carter, a British archaeologist. The tomb was filled with all kinds of amazing treasures and was an absolute gold mine of extraordinary items. One of the unexpected discoveries was a dagger with an iron blade and a decorative gold handle. The dagger was an unexpected find because it was the only thing made of iron in the tomb. In the days of Tutankhamun, iron was considered extremely rare and was more valuable than gold because it was not something the Egyptians had access to. Archaeologists have only found a few iron items from that time period, and most of them came from outer space. It's believed that the dagger King Tut was wearing had been fashioned from a meteorite. Archaeologists even know the exact meteorite the iron came from. Its name is Karga, and it was discovered about 150 miles west of Alexandria. We know this based on the composition of iron, nickel, and cobalt from King Tut's knife, which matches exactly with the Karga meteorite. Even without the ability to extract raw iron, the Egyptians somehow knew how to fashion a meteorite into a dagger. And now for number 5. But first, it's shout-out time! I want to give a big thank you to Rolando Ochoa and American Joe TV for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about amazing discoveries and strange history. Number 5. Tesla's Anti-Gravity Machine Nikola Tesla was such a magnificent genius that some think he may have been an alien. But this theory has been proven untrue since we know Tesla was born in Croatia to Serbian parents in 1856. 
However, some of the inventions he created throughout his career seemed completely out of this world. In 1928, Tesla registered a patent for a flying machine that looked like a hybrid between a helicopter and an airplane. It was a proposed spaceship that would utilize anti-gravity technology to propel itself through the cosmos. Before the famous inventor died, he revealed the blueprints for the propulsion system of his amazing aircraft. He called it a space drive and claimed it was an anti-electromagnetic field propulsion system. Unfortunately, Tesla's creation was never brought to life, and we haven't seen an anti-gravity machine that really works. But Tesla supposedly figured it out almost a century ago. Then, for whatever reason, his technology was forgotten. Number 4. Puma Punku's Stonework One of the most incredible places in all of Bolivia is the ruined temple complex of Puma Punku. It's located near the city of Tiwanaku and its origin is considered a mystery. The complex was thought to have been built during the height of the Tiwanaku Empire, which thrived between 300 and 1000 AD. They were one of the most powerful civilizations in South America before the rise of the Inca Empire and the arrival of the Spanish. The most fascinating thing that can be found in Puma Punku is its stonework. The buildings here were constructed using highly advanced techniques that haven't been seen anywhere else in Bolivia or Peru. Megalithic blocks, each one weighing several tons, were stacked so precisely that they are still interlocked like puzzle pieces. These immense stones fit together so perfectly that you can't even slide a razor blade between them. These blocks were created with machine-like qualities, and they even had holes drilled into them as if they had access to power tools. This was a civilization that hadn't even figured out how to write, and yet their stonework can hardly be recreated today. Because of this, some have speculated that the people of Puma Punku may have had help from extraterrestrial visitors. Number 3. Ancient Aluminum A mysterious object was discovered on the muddy shores of the Muris River in Romania. It was buried at a depth of about 33 feet and was originally found in 1973. What made the discovery so shocking was that the piece of metal, some form of aluminum, was estimated to be roughly 250,000 years old. That would mean it's been around since before humanity started working with metal long before we even left the comfort of our cozy caves. The mysterious object is the source of a lot of controversy. Archaeologists say it's an extremely lightweight metal that was likely manufactured. It's 90% aluminum, and some experts believe it could have come from alien visitors. Because of how deep it was found in the mud, there is no way that anyone accidentally lost the random object. Maybe it was a fragment of a UFO that fell off the craft, like a loose bolt. But there are those who say it could also be the byproduct of human engineering from a quarter of a million years ago. Experts are stumped, and nobody knows for sure where it came from. These days, the mysterious metal object is on display at a history museum in Romania. The curators of the museum still say its origin is unknown. Number 2. The Roman Goblet An incredibly smart Roman designed and built a chalice that could change color using nanotechnology 1,600 years ago. It's called the Lycurgus Cup, and it looks like any ordinary cup from the end of the Roman Empire. It depicts King Lycurgus of Thrace in an epic scene, which is how it earned its name. But what makes the chalice so remarkable is that depending on the direction the light hits it, it's a totally different color. When the cup is lit from the front, it's a bright green, but when the light hits it from the back, it turns blood red. Archaeologists at the British Museum were given the glass chalice in the 1950s, although it's unclear exactly where it came from. It wasn't until 40 years later that researchers in England looked at fragments of the chalice under a microscope. This is when they discovered that the Roman artisan who crafted the chalice used nanotechnology. They put particles of gold and silver inside the glass, each particle only being about 50 nanometers in diameter. That's significantly smaller than one grain of table salt. It was highly meticulous work that couldn't have possibly been an accident. The Roman artisan perfected the use of nanoparticles to change the look of the chalice based on the direction of the light. According to archaeologist Ian Freestone from University College London, 
the cup changes color because of electrons in the metal flex. The electrons vibrate at a certain frequency that changes the color depending on the way you look at the chalice. This is extremely advanced science and way beyond what we imagine the Romans were capable of. It's also the only surviving example of such technology ever being used. Number 1. Giant Stone Boxes Ancient aliens may have built giant stone boxes in Egypt about 3,300 years ago. At the Serapium of Saqqara, a large cemetery near Memphis, archaeologists found something unbelievable. Underground stone boxes were uncovered here, and historians say they were used to bury sacred bulls. Each box weighs roughly 100 tons and was crafted from pure granite. What makes these stone boxes so shocking is that they were made with 21st century precision. Brian Forrester, an expert on ancient Egypt, says the tomb in which the giant stone boxes were found was also made with incredible accuracy. The angles of the tomb are almost exactly 90 degrees, and the interior is within a couple ten thousandths of an inch from being perfectly flat. Someone built an amazingly advanced tomb and filled it with giant boxes for burying sacred Egyptian bulls. The extreme precision of the boxes is the reason some believe it was aliens who created them. But then again, did the Egyptians really need aliens to help them with their construction? We already know the Egyptians boasted an advanced knowledge of geometry. They were able to estimate pi, and they knew how to find the volume of a truncated pyramid. Based on this, it's not hard to believe they were able to make smooth surfaces and carve massive blocks of granite. Thanks for watching! Which of these awesome ancient technologies do you think is the most impressive? Let me know in the comments below! And don't forget to subscribe! See you next time! Bye!